questions or WhatsApp your questions 0244340437. We're also live on Facebook and uh, YouTube, so catch us live and direct there. My reading suggests that uh, up to 15% of couples are infertile, unable to conceive a child even though they've had frequent unprotected uh, sexual intercourse for a year or longer. And I'm told in my reading, or by my reading, it suggests that up to 40% upwards may be due to male infertility. So we don't often talk about this, but I've got the guests and the, uh, the professionals in the studio to do the discussion and the education, and you can join us later when we activate the phone lines. Docs, good afternoon. Good afternoon. And thanks for joining us on Ultimate Health. I hit off with this, uh, let me say, prevalence statistic, which suggests that uh, 40% upwards of uh, infertility cases may be due to male infertility. Dr. Yebe, let me ask you, I mean, we know a lot of the focus when it comes to uh, difficulties having children uh, is brought to bear on women. But this statistic I just read out suggests that uh, maybe we're not being fair or balanced in our approach to this. What do you say? In the first place, I want to thank our listeners mm -hmm. that they are going to listen to us and uh, ask questions concerning what will be discussed. Okay. When it comes to male infertility, I think it's a big problem because there are varied etiological factors which leads to male infertility. So when all are combined together, the statistics that is approximately about 40% and above mm. people having male type infertility may be right. Okay. But for our part of the world, sometimes it will be difficult to say specifically that it is 40% or 50%. It, right. might be, it might be more. Okay. Because traditionally, we are not used to taking, keeping records of these things. Okay. Right. So, so male infertility or male related infertility is a big issue. And last week with Dr. Sogbojo, we, we discussed the, the reluctance of men to present for evaluation, examination, assessment, and maybe even treatment or management, whichever be the case. And uh, in, the, in the face of this statistic, that should be telling us that we're leaving a huge segment of the problem untapped. Yes. Unfortunately, yes. And this might be due to the fact that we men tend to be dominant everywhere we are, mm. and there are females. Okay. So we find it easy to say, uh, Madam, take the money and go to the lab and come. Okay. Instead of we going. But for me and from my experience, it is far, far, far profitable and beneficial to the men to go and do their test towards finding out whether they are infertile or not, rather than the women. Okay. This is because it is very easy to diagnose a man that you are infertile. That is, your sperm comes, it is esospermia, there is no sperm, or oligospermia. Then we take it from there. Right. But when it comes to female type infertility, mm -hmm. the diagnosis, the trauma that the women go through, Right to diagnose whether they are fertile or not, mm -hmm. I think it's too traumatic for us to be allowing our women to go through this when the simple answer is lying with us. Right. The second aspect of it is that to treat male-type infertility mm -hmm. is very difficult because a lot of things must be considered. That is the volume, the quality, and also even the, uh, the genetic implications right. that are involved in this treatment. Mm. But these are not in the women. Okay. And today, I want to let my male counterpart know mm -hmm. that <coughs> if and when there is a problem of infertility, it could be a beginning of a dangerous disease, like a pituitary gland tumor right. or a testicular tumor. Okay. So when you go to the hospital and you are examined and tests are done and these things are found out, it's more of 
solving the problem right. rather than putting that under capital. Killing several stones, <laughs> as a friend of mine would say, with one bed, yes. right? Instead of the bed with the stone, he says you kill several stones with one bed. Yes. And that's the way he remembers it. But what you're saying is profound, that it is far more beneficial yes. for men to present that and, in a that. sense, verify yes. their fertility yes. or reproductive capacity. And it would save a lot of women from these intrusive, often uh, painful, complicated investigations where maybe the answer is lying right in front of us. Dr. Sabojo, you, you, you said this in a sense last week. Anything you want to add? What I want to say is that, you see, these days, you cannot actually just say it's the woman's fault. Okay. When, this day, when you send a woman to the gynecologist, he's most likely to ask your husband to come with you. Right. So that the investigation go on both sides. Mm -hmm. The only problem is, in my surgery, there are some men who refuse to go and do these uh, investigations. Right. Because so somehow they probably detect or they know that the fault lie with them. Okay. For instance, if a man has been going out with a woman for a long time, having unprotected sex, the woman never misses her period. Mm -hmm. the, the, the relationship break out. The woman misses the other man. Within a short period of time, the woman is pregnant. So when he hears about these things, he suspects probably he is a cause. Mm -hmm. But maybe the male, he wants to protect his image. He refuses to go and see the doctor. Right. But this day we have what you call a postcoital investigations. If you've had, if he's refusing to go to the doctor, you have sex with him and you come to us. Hmm. Whatever is left in your vagina, we can still. You can still do an analysis. That. Yeah. Post uh, postcoital. Investigations. investigations yeah. So there's been uh, intercourse, right, yeah. or coitus, yeah. and then you're suggesting that, well, the woman can now, after that, yeah. proceed to a facility yeah. and have whatever uh, is deposited. Deposited, examined. Uh, examined. Yeah. So you tried in absentia. <laughs> <laughs> the, the court will still sit. Yeah, huh? That is when the, the man is being stubborn. Really. Right. <clears throat> This is interesting. All on Ultimate Health Joy 99.7 FM. If you've just joined us, it's 16 minutes past year of two. We set out to understand and, uh, should I say, uh, isolate what constitutes and uh, what may cause male infertility. If you've just joined us, you're uh, free to send us your questions and concerns by WhatsApp 244 And we're live on Facebook and YouTube. My guest in the studio just heard speaking Dr. Lloyd Sobajo of the Empat Kaiko Hospital, Tema. And next to him is Dr. Paul Yedbe, also a urologist here in Accra. And he, they both hit the nail very hard on the head that when it comes to infertility, compromised uh, uh, fertility or reproductive functioning, we should place equal if not even more emphasis on the men. So our program is validated and uh, the panel and the court is sitting. So, Doc, let me ask. So when we talk of infertility, we talked about inability to conceive after a year or more of unprotected sex. Exactly. Right. Some men will be listening to us and say, right, before you guys go into causes and other things, other things I can look out for. Okay, you've just said a woman can take uh, or be investigated post coitus but is there anything that a man should look out for which may suggest that he may need to go for evaluation are there things that uh, you know no. <coughs> to my mind uh, it's difficult right it's difficult to say okay for a man to tell himself that oh I'm infertile okay of course there are other contributing factors mm -hmm. which could be that maybe the the in a childhood, right, before puberty, he had had a mom orchitis. Right, a mom orchitis is a swelling on the angle of the the ears. No, what we call mumps. 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 Right. Yeah. So, if not treated properly, mm -hmm. at a stage, you will know because testosterone will not be produced. Okay. Sperm will not be produced. So, the man after puberty will be taking the shape of a woman. Mm. The testes physically you start to take on the features, features of, a woman. of a woman. Yes. Then 
you yourself, when you look at your testes, you realize that the sizes are too small okay. as compared to maybe your friends that you see in school mm. coin buffing. Right. So these, well, maybe an extreme. Okay. But I feel that is the only physical thing that can be seen. Right. To say that this is an infertility, okay. infertile man. So structural or size or whatever, physical physical examination. Examination. Then you also mentioned mumps. Yes. So it, is it the infection that causes the problem? Yes, it's a viral, viral. infection of the, the parotid gland. Okay. On both sides of the So if you have a history of this pre pubertal history. Pre pubertal history. Right. Before that, you're sexually mature. Sorry, after puberty. After puberty. Not pre pubertal. Okay. It's post puberty. Right. Yeah. So after you've matured sexually, if you've had Mumps. Mumps. Right. It actually destroyed the, we call it the Sertoli cells, which produce the sperm. Right. And all that shows so the testes will not be able to produce sperm. Okay. Last week we also, yeah. yes, Doc. How are these so you see, um, When the people who come to see us mm -hmm. with infertility, who have their, uh, this thing, their semen analysis on the poor side, mm -hmm. a lot of them are not aware. Mm -hmm. I'm not aware that they've had uh, mumps. mumps. They don't even know what it is. Right. You have to ask them questions mm -hmm. before they tell you, oh, when I was at this age, I had this kind of infection. Mm -hmm. Then you know that probably the infertility is due to atrophy okay. of the testes because of this uh, mumps that the mumps they, had. they had. Okay. Right. In this instance, is it is it treatable or reversible? No, it's not. Because I'm not seeing smiles on your faces. You're just no, giving no. it as it is. If that is it's the not cause, it's, it's not, not reversible. It's not reversible. It's not reversible. There's no process that can help such a man uh, conceive. From his own sperm, yes. no. From his own sperm, no. Okay. Right. 21 minutes past the hour of two. Uh, good afternoon, Norte and Docs. Great topic, please. I'd like to know how does prostate enlargement or defects cause sexual weakness and infertility this is from Senyo in Adenta. Senyo, we'll come, we'll come to that in a second. Huh? But, Doc, we, 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 we had discussed earlier and suggested that we'll progress on the developmental plane. Yes. So childhood, these are the things that... Uh, are, the, are there other things that... Uh, yes, in childhood, that's embryology. Mm -hmm. That is the beginning of development of every part of the body mm -hmm. is considered. But here we are talking about the genital urinary. Okay. Everything develops properly. In a normal child. Mm. But in some children, the development does not occur as it's supposed to be. Right. Now, the testes might develop, but the tubes that should take the sperm to come out and go and do whatever they are supposed to do right. might be absent. So in this case, that child will be infertile. So that is one stage of the early developmental stages. Okay. There are other complex ones which we might not need to explain <coughs> now because they are very rare. Okay. Then, children who are school-going age, mm -hmm. or we say from the year zero mm -hmm. to year 23, 24, males or boys are prone to the turning of their testes at any point. Turning. Turning. The, right. The testes will turn. We call it torsion. So the, it's some kind of twisting. It twists. So the blood supply right. is deprived from going to the, okay. the, the testes. Right. Now, when so, this happens, it gives you a very severe pain. But what we have realized for some time now is that, especially in secondary schools, they don't take an early action mm. to take these people to the appropriate hospital. They might give them painkillers mm. and other things. But what to happen is that when the pain goes and the, there is no severe infection mm -hmm. to show that the process is ongoing, right. these testes will become very small. Mm. But another aspect of it is that that testis, which is dying, create antibodies which destroy the other aspect, the other testis. The healthy one. Yes. Right. So, you marry one year, two years, no child coming. Then you come to the hospital. Doctor asks you questions. You 
definitely examine you mm. and realize that one testis is very small, virtually mm. disappearing. The other one is there. Mm -hmm. We will go and do the semen analysis. There will not be any sperm. Right. You are sterile. You cannot have children of your own. Okay. Now, let me come to this, uh, perhaps to both of you, right? But you're talking about testicular torsion. Yes. So there's a twisting of the testes, the testes. which mm -hmm. cause, causes a compromised or... or compromised the blood supply, blood to, supply, the supply to the testes. Mm -hmm. And this can cause, eventually, the death of that. That testes. Right. Yes. And then it can also lead to the uh, what production of antibodies that affect right. yes. the healthy one. The healthy now, you're suggesting a certain... Age or age time group. range within right. these where, where action or intervention is very critical. Yes. And you're suggesting that in secondary schools, it's quite common for young males to have this testicular one. pain. Testicular pain. Right. So is all testicular pain related to this torsion or twisting we're talking about? Or are we suggesting to our listeners that, look, if you experience testicular pain, then have it followed up. Properly. Yeah, in medical school, is, okay. uh, yeah, medical school, mm -hmm. when teaching mm -hmm. on this disease, right. your professor or whoever will tell you that when there is a testicular pain, mm -hmm. you say that it is torsion. It's torsion. Then the second diagnosis is torsion. Right. The third diagnosis is torsion. So be highly yes. vigilant. Otherwise. Because of the serious nature of testicular torsion. Yes. So you look out for it. You have to look out for it. And you all. must perform the examinations or whatever to eliminate it and make sure that it hasn't caused da damage. Damage too. Right. Yes, Doc. And uh, one, one thing too is that, uh, you see, torsion occurs in children, you know, mm. up to the age of 20, 20 or lower. Right. It comes to a time that most of our colleagues who are not urologists, they see such things. Mm -hmm. They describe that as infection, orchitis or epidemiochitis. Right. Now, a child of that age, whenever there is such a pain, you have to think about torsion, right? infection. Okay. It's above this age that people have orchitis as infection of a testis. Mm -hmm. So people should know if your child in the school he has this Severe pain, mm -hmm. it cannot be infection. Right. Mostly, it's a torsion. Can it be both? Can you have an infection and still have the torsion? It is possible. So it it's, is. it's it's perhaps inadequate when it's treated only with whatever deals with the infection. Mm -hmm. And you're saying that the doctor or whoever should have a high suspicion and vigilance for in, torsion. In that age group. In that age, in that group. age group. Okay, in great. That. Great, great stuff. And uh, we're pinning it down because I'm sure when I activate the phone lines, and I'm, I'm sure it will start happening on my WhatsApp console, these are things that come up. But uh, we dismiss them. But the urologists in the studio are suggesting that these could be highly critical life incidents that may compromise a boy or a man's fertility in the future or subsequently. So we need to take note of them. All this has been brought to you kind courtesy Young Vita, a delicious way to grow. They sponsor Ultimate Health this and every Sunday, 205 on Joy 99.7 FM. Let's take a message from them and when we come back we'll learn a few more uh, of these uh, critical incidents that may impact on your boy child's fertility or your male partner's fertility. They can stay on Joy 99.7 FM. Yum, yum, yum. Yes, it's time for ultimate health. But if it's also meal time for baby, then you're looking for a healthy, easy to digest infant cereal packed with essential vitamins and minerals. You must be looking for one with omega-3 to aid in the healthy development of your child's brain. Then, of course, spot on. Choose Yum Vita. It comes in two delicious flavors, wheat only and a combination of maize and wheat. It's got it all. Yum Vita, a delicious way to grow. And uh, some of the stuff we've been uh, discussing with my urologist in the studio uh, has to do with growth and your development. Um, 
This is uh, from Kwame in Dortmund, I guess, Germany, listening to us. Please educate us a little. Can you, as a man, have a child and after some years become infertile? And he adds uh, slash impotent. And there's always that confusion with fertility and uh, potency. I'm sure my doctors will uh, uh, say make that distinction for us through an std or sti uh infection is this possible yes yes every infection causes damage to tissues mm -hmm. and the uh, the tissues can form uh, strictures and things like that okay so that the passage of the sperm can be blocked right as that's a result of the infection, infection yeah. right and that can cause the infertility. Particularly or especially untreated uh, infection. Untreated or not adequately treated. Not adequately treated. Because many males will go for treatment, they start, and as soon as the symptoms remit, they stop taking the medication, and the infection or the infectious process may still be at play. Yeah. Right. So Dortmund, uh, Kwame in Dortmund is right. Yeah. It's possible that you were fertile, you've had children before, <coughs> and then you had or you contracted this infection and therefore your fertility was compromised okay, okay. so in addition uh, we call that fertility or infertility is divided into two groups mm -hmm. primary infertility and secondary infertility okay now when it comes to primary infertility it means you have never impregnated anybody before okay secondary yes then now you cannot impregnate. Okay. It could be due to any cause. Right. As Doc said, it could be one aspect. Right. But there is something also we call varicose cell. Right. Varicose cell is the dilatation of the veins that take blood away from the testes. Right. Now, the testes, by God's plan, mm -hmm. should come out and be outside. Okay. The reason some of us think is because of the temperature control. Right. All the men in this room, we know... Mm -hmm. That when the weather is hot, right, our scrotum become loose. That okay. the skin covering the testes mm -hmm. it become loose. Right. The reason is to bring send out heat. Right. So that the optimal temperature with the testiness is maintained. So the scrotum has its own climate control. Oh, it's very, very, very defined. Right. <laughs> okay. And so, it's the, what, what we're saying is that the testes are sensitive to heat. Yes. Right. So the temperature. When the weather is cold, mm -hmm. the scrotum becomes thick, mm -hmm. becomes smaller, mm -hmm. so that heat is maintained. Okay. Now, when there is a dilatation of these vessels mm -hmm. or veins, they do not take blood away as quickly as it's supposed to do. Right. So the heat exchange, which is supposed to take place between the vessel bringing the blood to the testes right. and those taken away, right. is damaged. Okay. So inside of testes, which you have maybe... 30 to 33 degrees Celsius mm -hmm. to have 35 or 36. Okay. Sperm formation will not take. So it's almost like uh, a car's water pump not circulating the, exactly. the water. Exactly. The engine is not cooling. So yes. what you're saying that in varicocell, this process is compromised and therefore testicular temperature, right? A lot of T's in there, right? But uh, serious stuff. Testicular temperature is elevated, elevated. And this causes damage to the testes the, or the sperm? Or, the formation we right. call... It's damaged sperm, uh, sperm formation. We call it spermatogenesis. Okay. There are two tissues in the testes. Mm -hmm. One is to produce testosterone. Okay. Which make us men. Right. Then the second one, we call Cetoli cells. They produce sperm. Sperm. And they are highly, highly sensitive to temperature change. Okay. All right. Great stuff. Uh, this is something we can't speed up. We're taking it slow. And I know some of the listeners are, you know, uh, they're, they're like behind the Akusumu Dam waiting with their questions. But we're breaking this down so you understand. And also we're making sure that uh, we're not supplanting or replacing a full consu uh, consultation with uh, a professional with a requ requisite qualification, such as those sitting in front of me, Dr. Paul Yegbe and Dr. Lloyd Sobojo. Both are urologists. Yeah. So I will add another one to mm -hmm. this secondary infertility. Right. Now, the body produces its own hormones. Okay. Which manages, uh, manages us. Mm -hmm. Now, some are such that they respond to what we call negative feedback. So that when one is small, the other one lessens. Okay. So that the main supplier 
respond to it and reduce the production. So there's a regulation of hormone production. Hormones, right. Hormone production. Now, sometimes, as we see for bodybuilders, they use some form of steroids okay. to help them build their body. Right. Now, these steroids are coming from outside and in undefined dosage. dosage and so they will surpre right. suppress the main supplier mm -hmm. of those steroids. And at the end of the day, the hormones which are supposed to produce sperm right. will be reduced in level. In response to this external, external supply, supply of hormones, then it may have problems. Formation becomes an issue, okay. both in quality and sometimes in quantity. Wow! So we have to look at them. As okay, well, as well right. As well. And these are doc. These are not one. Uh, they're not automatic. Uh, should I say theories of causation? But they may have an impact with some males. Right, because we have been seeing them. Yes, because you have been seeing yeah, them. Been seeing so them. let's say somebody who is already perhaps marginally fertile or whatever has some problems, and then he's taking this to build his body. Is he more likely to have or present with these problems, or is it a general thing that we can say that if you use these bodybuilding steroids, you are likely to have compromised fertility? You are likely You're to likely, have. Yeah compromise. Okay. I like that because it's coming from you and not from me. Right. Uh, you can still send your WhatsApp messages 0244-340-437. The program is Ultimate Health on Joy 99.7 FM brought to you by Young Vita, a delicious way to grow. I'm having this uh, very, 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 uh, let me say easy to digest, but very nutritious discussion with two uh, urologist, Dr. Paul Yegbe and uh, Dr. Lloyd Sobojo. We're talking about male infertility and they've suggested we hit off very hard with the emphatic statement that, look, men should sit up and uh, present themselves for examination anytime these issues come up and it could save us a lot, a lot, a lot of money, trouble, and stress. This one says, when I examine my testicles, sometimes I find that one of the tubes is much bigger than the other one. And sometimes they are the same size. When it is bigger, it can be up to one centimeter in diameter. Occasionally, it is visible from the outside of the testicle. I am 34 now. Uh, I guess uh, there's no question attached. He's sharing information, but I guess he has questions. Uh, is this normal? No. In the first place, I find it difficult that um, the somebody who has not been trained can mm -hmm. know that he has a uh, one of uh, the ducts is smaller than the other. Right, and he's even giving it, uh, it figures. Is, it is one it centimeter. Is difficult for a trained doctor to find out. Probably he's con uh, confusing varicose cells with the tubes. You see. Right. Okay. Mm. Yeah, I've had to do a surgery on somebody with varicose cells. Mm. He later came back and said, uh, I've cut through his uh, vast difference. Right. That is a serious thing. Mm -hmm. But he is unlettered. Yeah? He went home and he was looking at his testicles and feeling them. Right. And he was feeling the end points of the, uh, of the, this in, uh, the vessels. vessels. The vessels, okay. And he goes about telling people he, that you've damaged him in some him. serious yeah. way. Right. This thing so what you're suggesting to this uh, last message is that uh, proper examination yeah, needs yeah, to be done. Yeah. Yes, Doc. But let's give him the benefit. The benefit, of the doubt. right. Yeah. Now, subjectively, he feels there's a problem. Yeah, yeah, there could be a problem. Right. Because what he's examining is not only the tube. Mm -hmm. There inside, we have the cord. Mm -hmm. The blood vessels are there. Mm -hmm. The nerves are there. Right. The lymph ducts are there. The veins are there. Right. So which one are we talking about? Okay. It's very difficult for somebody to palpate his vas, to feel his vas. Okay. But you can feel the whole thing. Right. It could be big one way or the other. Now, coming again on the changes. Right. Sometimes now, it's bigger, sometimes it's smaller. The left side of our testes mm -hmm. drains into directly at a 90 degree to the renal, renal vein. vein. So if there's a problem... Most of the time, uh, cancer of the that part of the kidney, mm. the drainage will be obstructed somehow. Okay. So you to mean that all the blood which is coming away mm. will rather be coming down and dilate the vessel. Okay. And it's one aspect of varicose cells that we have discussed. Let me just. So this man mm -hmm. might need a physical examination. He definitely does. Pregnancy. But let me just uh, backpedal to what you said. The left side of the testes. Yeah. Are you talking about the left? Testicle, the left testis. 
The left. The left test. So you're talking about a particular test. Yes, but we have right hand. All right. right. The, so it can't be the left side of the right test. No. What no. you described? No. Right. Okay. Right. Good, 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 good. All right. I wanted to get the pink sheet clear okay. so that the polling agents will not get it wrong. Right. Listening to your program, my son had testicular pain in secondary school, which was poorly managed. By the time he had an occupexy, blood supply had been so compromised that he lost the testicle. He also has, he has also had problems with autoimmune disease and has been on steroids. What are his chances of being fertile? The chances are small. Yeah, they are, they are there. Mm -hmm. The chances are small. Right. Because for, for one thing, he has another test. Yes. Right. But the and then you can, can, you can, he has autoimmune yeah. diseases. Yeah, and he's, you can treat it with steroids. Yeah, it's which type of autoimmune yeah. disease? Okay. So probably it's, it's uh, should I say, difficult to give a conclusive answer to the question. Until we know... Right. Also, immune disease. Being okay. Treated. Right. I keep on encouraging my listeners that we can't give these conclusive answers as if you've been examined and been through a process. So be careful uh, with your expectations when it comes to the questions. Right. Good afternoon, sir. Could you please, please, could you help me find an answer to this question? Can a man with a B plus blood group impregnate a woman who is also B the same blood group? Thank you. Yes. yes. Okay. Ah, the questions we field here, my discerning listeners. Uh, Ultimate Health on Joy 99.7 FM brought to you this and every Sunday by Young Vita. Can I get the contacts of the specialist from Peter McCarthy Hill? Last week we gave out contacts. Uh, we'll see what we can do for you this week. Um, oh, somebody's sending me something about Ghana. China relationships. Uh, I don't think it has something to do with fertility. But uh, I'm going to activate the phone lines all too soon. It's 40 minutes past the hour of two. Zero three zero two two one six five four one. I know you've learned a lot and you have uh, pressing questions. Those are the buttons to push to get in on Ultimate Health. Zero three zero two two one six five four one. I'm in the company of Dr. Lloyd Sobojo and Dr. Peter Yedbe, uh, both urologists. We're dealing with discussing, delving deep into male infertility, and uh, we haven't even gone that deep, but we're learning a lot. Uh, Doc, so some of these are things that we should take serious very early on. And from listening to both of you, we're not doing that seriously enough. All right. Um, at this stage, let's say somebody who says, well, my son had poorly managed testicular pain. At that stage, should they be seeing and being managed by a specialist such as yourselves? I would say mm. yes. Well, mm. you see, when somebody has testicular torsion, mm -hmm. something has to be done within the first six hours. Right. If it goes more than six hours, you are damaging the, the testicles. Mm. And that will bring into play his fertility and okay. other things, you see. Right. I'm not and even... If, yeah. And if you misdiagnose it as a orchitis, mm -hmm. it means you are going to keep the patient there, treating him with antibiotics, which are not helpful. Right. And you only end up... Okay. Let me quickly mm. take Echo on my line and then come back. I think Dr. Yegbo wanted to add something. Echo, good afternoon. How are you? I'm fine, thanks. Where are you calling from? Apam. Apam, please speak up and share with us. Uh, not a, I'm a diabetic. I used to have good erection, but uh, uh, currently my erection is not that stiff. My pain is not that stiff. Right. And because of that, my pain is my pain is not actually flowing. And I don't know whether it's because of the diabetes or there's an infection, but I'm not experiencing any uh, pains around my abdomen. And then any 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 pain sensation in my pain. Okay. And then, and then, I don't know, you see, when I have sex, my pain doesn't affect at all. Okay. And then, second, second, the, the sperm is not flowing. Previously, when I have sex, it will flow all right, and then it will flow maybe about five minutes, it will keep on flowing. Mm -hmm. And now, it doesn't come at all for the past close to about six, seven months. Okay. Right. Uh, diabetes and reproductive functioning, and uh, he's talking about uh, erectile dysfunction as well. Yeah. So, um, diabetes... It's one of the major causes of erectile dysfunction. Mm -hmm. um, to explain it literally, when there is high blood sugar, right. they mix with other things and blood the blood vessels which supply the penis. Mm -hmm. So at a point, it will be difficult for you to have erection. Okay. But there are a lot of medications these days. 
we say you can take the oral medication right for erection mm -hmm. prescribed by a doctor of course okay but if it's not working currently in this country we also have a combination of about four different drugs mm -hmm. which have been used before as erectile dysfunction medications okay and the four when you go to the, the hospital mm -hmm. they would examine you right ask you questions and treatment is obtained okay right i have another caller on the uh, line yes doc, let me just take this call and come back hello hello yes good afternoon your name please good afternoon how are you i'm fine thanks who's uh, who's speaking please G give us your name um <laughs> Please don't leave my name, I beg you. Okay, quickly share with us and lower the volume on your radio set, okay? All right. Okay. Right, so quickly. So, this is the problem. My husband um, has undescended testicles. Okay. One is not there. And um, he said the other one was okay. But up of, until now, yeah, we went for, we're not having babies, so we went to do some stuff and then it, it came up that, the other one that is there cannot produce sperm. I think the, the test came out, no sperm count. Right. Is there a cure for that? And I don't know if that could also cause the fact that um, you you don't perform well when you're having sex. Because he can just shut off at Joy, any time. This is something that is very difficult for me to talk about, but... Okay, we appreciate you sharing. How long have you been married? We've been married for about um, six months. Six months? Yes. Yeah. Okay, right. I... Pardon? No, I'm listening. Okay, right. So, uh, they've been married for six months. Uh, I, I don't want to make assumptions, but uh, she's giving the history, Doc. Yeah. Um, it's it's, it's a similar, it's, it's a known history. Right. Now, earlier on, in our presentation, mm -hmm. I said God, in His wisdom, right, says that the testes both should hang out, okay. and there should be a temperature control, right. Now, if it's undescended, where it is, in the first place, it will not develop properly. Okay. Secondly, sperm formation will be a problem. Mm -hmm. Then third, conversion from the normal state to a cancerous state, right, is very high. Okay. So this man must see a doctor as right. early as possible. Okay. Now, the second one, not producing sperm, mm -hmm. they need a, an examination. Mm -hmm. Is it due to a varicose cell, right. which is a common problem? Which is correctable. Correctable. Or Joy. is because of the abnormality of the other one, which has not descended, mm -hmm. the second one, too, does not have the tubes which would bring right. out the sperm. Okay. So it's Difficult to discuss on the okay, phone. Right. But if she's that worried, okay. Later on, we'll give the right. numbers. Yeah. And they can yeah. We'll Please speak to my producer it. of, uh, and then perhaps we'll, we'll bridge we'll bridge that uh, gap, and then you can uh, get to you know speak to a, a professional. Uh, I have another caller on the line. Hello. 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 Yes. Good Hello. afternoon. Yes. Yeah. Good afternoon. Yeah. Who's speaking, please? This is Basit Abdul Basit. Abdul Basit. Where? From Old Road. Madina. Oh, Road Madina. Okay, share with us. Yes, please. Can you please one day kind of repeat this particular program? This particular program, we'll love to hear because some of us really joined it quite late. Pardon? And again. Can you, can you repeat I'm that, asking, please? I'm yeah. asking if you could perhaps get one day to repeat this particular program. Okay. Many of us, I, I believe, I mean, I, for instance, I really just tuned in and I've kind of found it is very interesting. If you could one day repeat, I'm sure many other people, listeners, will really want to kind of uh, join you. Right. And again, if you like palpate, uh, uh, palpate yep. your scrotum, I say if you palpate, if you kind of fill your scrotum and you kind of find some slums, I mean some lumps in them, what does that mean? Okay. Lump, right. What does that mean? Okay. Thank great, you. great Abdul Basit, and uh, join us. We we set off at two o five, and the program is also live on our Facebook page. Okay, you can go for the audio feed afterwards. Right. I'll get a uh, question uh, responses for you in a sec. I have another caller on my line. Hello. Yeah, Nina. Yes. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, boss. How are you? I'm fine. Who's this? Yeah, this is Ajman. Okay. Share with us quickly. 
Yeah, please, I want to ask, does the portrait have something to do with hernia? Does the, the prostate have, have something to do with hernia? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Now, the one that people used to call phase five for all of this. The one that people call what? Phase five. Phase five? <laughs> yeah. My goodness. All right. That's why I'm not a urologist. Yeah. Docs, phase five. Yeah, so... Well, hang on. I have another caller. Let me take this one and then we'll get answers for all of these. Hello, good afternoon. Good afternoon, see. Right, who's speaking? Uh, Echo, I just called. Echo. Call on. Okay. Yes, I, was the, I was the first caller, but I don't think my, my question has been answered. I'm saying, I'm saying, is it because of the United Defense? That's why my pain is already flowing again. But you, you called from, uh, you said the... Apam. Apam. Yes, yes. Okay. You mentioned the diabetes and then the flow as well. Yes. Yes, yes. Okay, right. Okay. Actually, it is because of the right the function. That is why my stream is not flowing. Yet. Okay, all right. Okay, good. Um, right. Uh, earlier on, you were talking about the erectile dysfunction. Mm -hmm. It looks as if a lot of people are uh, putting too much emphasis or they are not being able to get a hard on. Mm -hmm. Now, these things could be the beginning of some serious problems. Mm -hmm. So don't think only about the fact that you are not getting erectile dysfunction. Right. It could be a precursor to other conditions myocardia in fact right because you have a vascular system so it could in be indicative of cardiovascular disease, disease yeah. right right so you need to look at that yeah you, see, you have to see a doctor don't just go and buy things things to uh, to so that you get your erection right there could be something behind it okay. right okay that's a good very good point yes yeah so i want to let's answer the question mm -hmm. of the the flow the flow the discharge he's the saying discharge. is the one who said no he said he full lumps Okay, uh, Basit asked about lumps when you yes. you feel and you yes. feel lumps. Yeah, so in the testes, there are a lot of structures there, mm -hmm. it could be any of them, mm. it could be uh, spermatocell, right? It could be the cyst of the head of the epididymis mm -hmm. or the tail of the epididymis or a testicular tumor. Okay, so we would advise that they seek a medical, right? A medical advice, okay, right? Then the gentleman who says, uh who he says the flow, has the flow is not as strong? Yes, but he's a diabetic. Mm -hmm. Yes, diabetic destroy nerves. Mm -hmm. It destroys cells. So sometimes mm -hmm. the co the contraction right. of the the muscle which pulls out the sperm right. must be intact. Okay. But another aspect, what we might be looking at is what we call a retrograde ejaculation. Right. Now, when we ejaculate. The sperm goes back, mm -hmm. hit a closed bladder neck right. before coming anti -grade. Okay. So if the bladder neck is lax mm -hmm. or is weak, right. you will see that you ejaculate. Right. But the majority of the sperm will goes go back into the urine. The bladder. It goes into it the goes bladder and comes out. the bladder and be part of the urine now. Okay. So you will not see anything. Right. So all these things, as we say, mm. we do not want to make diagnosis right. and treatments on air. Okay. So our telephone numbers will right. be available. Okay. So that's, that could be one of the reasons why they do post uh, ejaculation urine, urine analysis. Exactly. To see if there's sperm there in the are urine. Enough sperm in it to indicate that you are rather ejaculating. Okay. And that can also be sorted out. It can be sorted out. All right. Out. Great. Most of the time, too, when you've had a um, prostatectomy done, yeah, mm -hmm. you also suffer from this uh, retrograde right. ejaculation. Right. Okay. Right. I have Alberto on my line. Good afternoon, Alberto. Thanks for waiting. Good afternoon, please. Yep. How are you? I'm fine, thank you. You're most welcome. Share with us quickly. Okay, please. I would like to know. I have a 14 year old boy who, when when I gave birth to him, he was diagnosed of having a this is PD food deficiency. Okay. And the medications. I'm acting this based on what the doctor said that every infection has an effect on some of the cells. He, will, he has been given injections like in a day, antibiotics, eight injections in a day for about a month. So he recovered. Okay. He's now 14 years, and I would like to know if maybe he will be having um, an effect okay. due to right. what you are discussing. Okay, great. Okay. Thank you. Right. Her son is on treatment for G6PD, uh, and she's asking whether his uh, full regimen of medications will impact on his fertility. Let me just read this out from Dede in Maryland. She says, does the, the mention of temperature, does extreme heat and cold affect sperm production and fertility? If so, what should be the temperature range? Can the body control temperature range at those extremes? Right. Okay. So let's look at the G6PD and medications generally. 
in this is PD. Right. The membrane that surround the red cells, mm -hmm. they are very weak. Okay. So they are susceptible to certain medications. Mm. So if these medications are given, which are not supposed to be given, mm -hmm. what you will see, you see the child becoming anemic and be urinating okay. a Coca-Cola urine. Right. But if that does not happen, I don't think there is nothing to okay. worry about. Okay. Right. All right. Always can be checked out. Take a message from Yamvita and come back, and uh, we'll do the conclusions and also, yes, also get uh, should I say answers for you and phone numbers. That's right, Yam Vita brings you ultimate health. Uh, we had a question about prostate and hernia earlier, and then we'll deal with uh, today's question on temperature as well, Doc. All right. So concerning prostate and hernia, there is relationship. Mm. Now, if and when there is a prostate enlargement, right. you might not be urinating well. Okay. So you have to use your abdominal pressure mm -hmm. to increase the force on the bladder for the urine to come out. Right. Now, so you strain yourself to pass you strain. urine. Right. So in that thing, if you already have a weak point on any part of your abdomen mm. and you are increasing the abdominal pressure, okay. there is hernia formation. Right. So normally what we advise as doctors is that if you have a hernia mm -hmm. and you have problems with urinating okay. due to a prostate enlargement, the prostate must be treated okay. before the hernia is replaced. Okay, great. The temperature regulation uh, issue. Does extreme heat and cold affect sperm production and fertility? And can the body control the temperature range at those extremes? So those who live in very cold parts of the world and vice versa. Okay. Actually, so, okay. Mm -hmm. right. It's the heat. It's heat that affects the sperm production. Right. We've talked about that already. Uh, cold would not actually affected that way. Okay. But temperatures, high temperatures will do that. Okay. So there are people who work in boiler rooms, mm -hmm. uh, drivers on long distance journeys. Right. And other people who do a lot of work with heat. Right. They are susceptible to having an increased temperature of the scrotum. Okay. And that affects the spermatogenesis. Right. Okay. Right. Um, we're running out of time. Um, a lot of people wanted uh, contact details or contact numbers. Uh, Doc, are you are you able to give us a, a contact? Yeah, yes. Can. Mm. So I can yes, you can. So um, I'm Dr. Yegbe. Right. You can get me on 024-280-1234. Mm -hmm. Right. Anytime. 24 Two eight zero one two three seven. All right. Okay. Two eight zero twelve thirty seven zero two four. Doctor Paul Yegbe and uh, Doc, you also gave out your number last week, and I'm sure uh, <laughs> you're you're under uh, a lot of pressure. Um, maybe later we'll put on our web page also the Kaiko Hospital number mm, as I'll, well. I'll prefer that. Yeah, for those of uh, you who go to our web page, we'll give you those details as well. Uh, we haven't dealt with everything, and we haven't talked about management, right? A lot of the discussion has focused on the production and ability to produce. We haven't looked at uh, counts, sperm analysis, or even whether the sperm can do what it's supposed to do. So we'll uh, find time to do that. Uh, okay. Let me thank uh, Dr. Paul Yegbe and uh, Dr. Lloyd uh, Sogbojo. Uh, each time I, I do this, I do a lot of reading and I still end up learning so much more and that's why uh, joy fm in particular and ultimate health specifically are most grateful that you share your sundays with us and we'll be calling on you again thank many you. thanks thank you very much thank you. many thanks to uh, our discerning listeners as well your questions always astound me i just don't know where you get them from and i know you wait and wait and wait and wait and wait till sunday so you can grab us and ask the questions we'll be back next sunday uh, kind courtesy of Young Vita, a delicious way to grow. Many thanks to uh, engineer extraordinaire Sule and uh, producer extraordinaire 
uh, Abe Kusankofi, who uh, I don't know, was shifting his seat. I don't know whether he was regulating temperature or trying to do something during the program, but it, 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 knowledge, knowledge is power. The man called Beatrice Le Ankara. <laughs> yes, the B, B Le, the B is for Beatrice. He doesn't want me to say it, uh, but he comes up with Sunday uh, rhythms. It's always good after we, we, we bombard you with all this stuff to relax as well. Very soon I'll be trying to do some encroachment on his territory to see if he'll allow me to, you know, play music and still talk health. You but, always do. Yeah, I always encroach him. Yeah. Right. You should see. He was my senior in, in school, so when he's yeah. behind me, <laughs> he comes with such power and intimidation, but it's all good. Many thanks to our listeners, and like I said, many of you, I try to harvest your numbers so that we can also facilitate the bridge between you and the professionals. There's a reason why we don't do it on air. So stick and stay on Joy 99.7 FM. Be lay, Beatrice, lay, Ankara. <laughs> is up next with uh, Sunday Rhythms. I'm out. <laughs>